Good morning, children. Today, in slight departure from regular Pure Mix videos, we're going to talk about French hot dogs, otherwise known as le hot dog. The first thing I'm going to do is show you the list of stuff you're going to need from your grocery store to be able to follow and do your own le hot dog at home. You're going to need a bottle of wine with assorted glass. The white should preferably be French, red, and old. I'm going to open it right away because it needs to breathe for the recipe. There you go. This is a 2000 Buzet. Should not suck. You're also going to need hot dogs, preferably good quality, and a few utensils, a cutting board, a pair of scissors that you did not use for something nasty recently. There you go. Sounds good. Gonna be all right. Okay. A whisk, something else to stir, whatever. Two pans, one for the hot dogs, one for the sauce. Milk, butter, flour, a measuring cup for liquids, little scale just in case. Let's be precise about this. A grater for the cheese, and what they call French bread. If you have a choice, which you may or may not, try and find something small like this, which in French they call a ficelle, which means a rope or a string. It's a really small baguette, really. And the point of that is that you're going to put the hot dog in it. And so it's better if you don't have 80% bread and 20% hot dog. The whole point is to balance it well. It's kind of a mixing thing. As always, you need a clear vision of what you're shooting for at the end of the project. In this case, I'm interested in eating soon. So I'm going to warm up the oven now so that it's ready when all my preparations and all my stuff will be put together. So I'm going to preheat the oven. Also, I want to make sure that the hot dogs are cooked by the time I'm done with the sauce. So I'm going to turn the water on right now. In the meantime, take a knife, make very small incisions on the hot dogs, very small. This is so that they don't blow up in your face when you put them in the water. Something that's good to do now while the hot dogs are still cold so you don't burn your fingers later is to cut the bread to the right length. It's in good taste to make the hot dog bun, if you will, more or less the size of the hot dog. La, voila. Two, we made four, so let's make four. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna torture the bread into accepting the sausage. The way I usually do it is I just cut the upper crust like this and make a little V. I know it's a disgrace to discard such wonderful bread, but you can always nibble on it while you cook. So the idea is this, you know. I like it when the hot dog sticks out a little bit on the side, it's fun. Then you can remove a little bit of the inside so that there's more room for the goodies. So I have my four buns ready. And next thing I can do while I wait for the sausages to go is grate the cheese. How much cheese to grate? I don't know, as much as you can stand. It's time to uh, integrate the wine in the recipe. You smell it. Should not suck. Does not suck. Okay, next. Let's put the hot dogs in the water. Et voila. Then you turn the heat off and you count six to eight minutes, depending on how neurotic you are about germs and stuff like that, how good your hot dogs are and how long it's gonna take you to make the sauce. Let's make the sauce. You're gonna need equal parts butter and flour. You should try and strive for 30 grams of butter and 30 grams of flour for this amount of hot dogs. If you're in America and you don't know grams, you try them, it's addictive. That's 30 grams of butter. I'm gonna turn the heat on under my pan here. And 30 grams of flour. Flour is a pain in the butt because it flies all over the place. Et voilà. Okay, so the point here is to use the whisk and to whisk the flour onto the melted butter to make what we call a beurre blanc or beurre roux, depending on how far you cook it. It's still melting. I hate electric heat. All right, you do have to wait until it's fully melted. It's like watching paint dry, but louder and smellier. Okay, I'm too impatient. So I'm mixing the flour with the butter 
and it should look like this more or less. Don't put all the flour at once or you'll suffer. There you go. It's okay if it becomes a little bit solid, that's no big deal. Make sure the heat's not too much. It's too much right now. That's good enough. Then, just measure 400 centiliters of milk, which, just like the gram, centiliters, milliliters, very, very addictive measure system. So you start pouring a little bit of milk at a time and just extend the paste you just made into a sauce. I wish you could smell this, it's lovely. And while it cooks, we're gonna season it. To season it, you need pepper. How much pepper? Like a big smidgen-ish. Some salt. About this much. And nutmeg. So put the nutmeg in there. Just do it. Okay, keep stirring. So this is gonna cook for a minute so it gets a little thicker. I'm gonna let it rest for a second and uh, go to part two of the red wine part of the recipe. Definitely does not suck. All right. Once the consistency is just right, which is about like this, little like, kind of pudgy thingy, put a little bed of the sauce in the hot dog like this. Well, in the bun, really, let's be real. There you go. You could use a spoon too, but I forgot to get one and I'm too lazy to go get it. There you go. Then you take the dogs and put them in place. And then you take the cheese and shove it on top. It's a really healthy meal. Voila. It was great with the wine. Perfect. All right, so this concoction goes inside the oven. So let's do that. Four minutes, maybe. I put it fairly high up in the oven so that if I feel like browning the cheese with a little bit of the broil on top, I just press one button, I don't have to. <gasps> I put it at the bottom, the broiling is not gonna happen. You know, it's planning ahead, vision. Vision is key. Groovy. It may blow up. Oh, yes. Look at that. Take them out. Oh, smells great. There you go. Et voila. If you're wondering about where this recipe comes from, well, it's a personal adaptation of the hot dog that you can get after a gig in Paris, in Pigalle, at 3 or 4 a.m. You go and you have a whole bunch of shops, and this is what they make. Ooh, hot. Ow. All right, you know what? Ow. <laughs> when you go to Piga, they do serve them this way. Remember what they say? Once you go French, you can't go back. Mm. Et voilà.